there. And Testing English YouTube. Testing French YouTube.
morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We should all be working outside today. It's so nice out. You're welcome to come to Mooney's Bay. <laughs> I I went by Mooney's Bay on the weekend. There were a ton of people there. I'm happy in my backyard, but I can't see my screen is the problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's so bright. I It's just, it looks black. So I have to move indoors. Lisa McLeod is coming. She's on the speakers list. I guess there's more than one. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll start the meeting in one minute. We'll start the meeting in one minute. We'll start the meeting in one minute. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Finance and Economic Development Committee meeting for the, 20, the 18th of May, the 18th of May, uh, 21. Uh, do we have quorum, Madam Coordinator? Yes, we do, Mr. Mayor. Okay, a few reminders uh, for today's meeting, which is being held using Zoom. Uh, members of committee and staff, please stay on mute at all times unless called upon. Uh, hands of uh, council, uh, or sorry, members of council, if you wish to speak to an item, please use the raise hand feature located at the bottom of the participants list in Zoom and star nine for members on the phone. Uh, this meeting will be live streamed on YouTube. Members and staff are asked to position their cameras so that their faces are centered 
as close to the top of the frame as possible. And phone in participants, please do not put the phone on hold. <clears throat> Before we proceed, I'll do a quick uh, roll call of members. Concier Cloutier. Present. Councillor DeRuz. Here, Mr. Mayor. Councillor El Shantiri. Present. Councillor Gower. Here. Councillor Harder. Here. Councillor Hubley. Here. Councillor Luloff. Present. Uh, Councillor Moffat. Here. Councillor Suds. Here. Councillor Tierney. Present. And Vice Chair Dudas. Any declarations of interest? Est-ce qu'il y a des déclarations d'intérêt? See none. We'll now go through the uh, consent agenda. Um, quarterly stage two LRT update that we'll, we'll come back to that because we obviously have a presentation. Uh, financial services service, the general revenue, uh, revenue service, general accounts write-offs 2020 and repayment agreements executed in 2020. Received? Uh, item number three, Office of the City Clerk, the Eroge Greffier Municipal, City of Ottawa Accessibility Plan Annual Update 2021. Carried? Carried. Carried. Uh, Office of the City Clerk Annual Report. Uh, it was my pleasure to proclaim April 2021 as Information Management Month in the City of Ottawa. Record keeping is an important component of the city's COVID-19 response and is key to good decision making uh, and for sharing information with the public. Uh, I also proclaimed April 2021 as Archives Awareness Month in the City of Ottawa. Residents are invited to discover the City of Ottawa's rich history, which is being held in safekeeping in the City Archives. Uh, on the uh, report? I have one question. Uh, is it brief or should we come back? Uh, it's just one question, brief. Okay. Uh, thanks, Mayor. To the city clerk, I read his report and I read the appendix, uh, the one related to um, uh, Amphiba requests. Uh, there's data in the report from the city clerk. And my question is just regarding the length of time it takes to respond to requests. Although the number of requests in 2020 was down uh, significantly compared to 2019 and 2018, the number of cases or files uh, 60 days or greater was up. So I just wanted to hear from the city clerk, what type of challenges is he experiencing to reply to these in a timely manner? You, Mr. Mayor, um, essentially what it is, is although there are uh, the lesser number of actual applications being filed, the level of complexity and size is increasing. So whereas in the past they would have said, can I have you know, document A, they would go and get it. They now say they would like, in some instances, thousands of pages, which then require us to do our due diligence, go through them all and uh, uh, provide the appropriate uh, comments. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Great. On the report is presented. Carried. That update. Okay. Uh, item number five, status update, finance and economic development committee inquiries and motions for the period ending May 7th, 2021. Received? Received. Uh, planning, infrastructure, and economic development, um, Montreal Road. We have a presentation, so we'll come back to that. Uh, item number seven, expropriation of lands, Montreal Road, expropriation de terrain, chemin de Montréal, uh, de Montréal. carried. Uh, item number eight, lease renewal, 2339 Ogilvy Road, employment and social services, east office. Renouvelement de bail de 339 chemin Ogilvy, service social et d'emploi d'est. Carried. Uh, infrastructure services, uh, item nine, comprehensive asset management policy and framework. We have a, a presenter who would like to speak to that, so we'll come back to that. Planning services, service to planification, item 10, Brownfield Grant application 770, Somerset Street West and 13 La Breton Street North. Carried. Okay. Okay. I've done number 11, Brownfield Grant Application 320 McCray and 315 Tweedsmere Avenue. Carried? Carried. Carried. Okay. Okay. Go back uh, to our first item. 
uh, the quarterly stage two LRT uh, update, a mise à jour trimestrielle sur l'étape de de train léger. So we have a presentation <clears throat> and a video, Mr. Manconi and Mr. Morgan, please. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I believe there's a video that's going to be queued up to start the presentation. Is there sound or music with this? Should be sound, yes. So that was just a short three minute synopsis of the progress that's been going on on the system. So that uh, video will be available for sharing uh, later this morning. So we can share that with you. Now we have a, a presentation to go through. So I'll take you through each of the station sites and the, uh, the infrastructure sites, show you kind of the progress that's been made um, and talk you through different challenges along the way. So I believe Eric, you're gonna put up the presentation. So we go ahead to slide number two. So just as a reminder, or maybe a, a check-in more than anything on, on slide number two, the amount of work that's taking place uh, across the city is, is really amazing. In the east, the focus this summer is about widening the highway. That includes widening it all of the 
intersections, the interchanges. Um, so a lot of work going on there to widen the highway. We just made uh, a great progress this past weekend at Place d'Orleans. Um, and so that's gonna allow us to start the station construction uh, imminently at that location. Cut and cover tunnel, uh, they're about, I would say, 25% through the rock cut excavation in Byron Linear Park. And so there's gonna be a lot of work through that area. The idea is to wrap that up this year. And then all the bridges on the south extension, 127 girders. Uh, last uh, week, there was a number of additional girders that went on that line bank station. So you really get a sense of the size of that structure. Uh, it's gonna be obviously carrying very large diesel, 80 meter diesel trains. And so it needs to be significant, but good progress at line bank station. Go to the next slide. Again, this is uh, stage two is really about expanding stage one, uh, re leveraging that core section through the core, making sure we can connect to as much of the community as possible, bringing 77% of Ottawa residents within five kilometers. And there's different ways to get to the station. And I'll show you later in the presentation some examples of some of the changes that we've made to the stations to make it easier to get to those stations. Go to the next slide. Just in terms of, you know, some impacts this year and impacts into the future. So the, the long term forecast 27,000 person years of employment. Uh, last year, we had almost 2000 direct uh, direct jobs in the city of Ottawa working on the project. And this year, we are going to see a little bit more volume in terms of uh, employment numbers up to 2100. So a lot of people working in all corners of the city. So a lot of uh, additional employment opportunities. Uh, there, there's no, <laughs> there's a shortage of work uh, right now. There are, you know, Lots of job opportunities with the two contracting teams if, uh, if there's interest in those. You go to the next slide. And then just the long-term you know, reduction in greenhouse gases, you know, wrapping up really what is the, the overall benefit from the stage two project. Um, so from there, I'll go on to the next slide and I'll talk a little bit about the, the Trillium Line South. So the first slide that you'll see is a picture of Bayview Station. So at Bayview, you know, we have the existing platform, so we're lengthening the existing platform, platform, adding a second platform, which is something we didn't have previously. That gives us the redundancy in the event that there's operational issues. They've just finished the helical piles in this location, so they're getting ready to do the foundation work for the two platforms. And then the, the big gap on the bottom right you see is where the Trinity development is going to go up, and there'll be a direct connection from the Trinity development across uh, using a pedestrian bridge across to the west side of the platform. So a very good connected site. If you go to the next slide, we'll show a course at Ophelia. So good uh, progress there in terms of the platform. And this is a theme that you'll see throughout these stations is the formwork has been largely completed at this location to establish the, the walls and the, the foundation for the platform that will be filled in. And that will essentially be the, the platform for the transit uh, shelters that are going to be added to those stations. And then right along the bridge where you see the green felt there that's where they're going to build the new plaza they need to add the elevator banks um, so a lot of work to be done here uh, but they are making good progress on those platforms and you'll see that the platforms are coming along at, at most of the stations on the alignment if you go to the next slide uh, we just have a quick shot of the the rock excavation that essentially goes from this location all the way to beach street uh, it's about 90 percent complete there's a little bit of a rock shelf that's left uh, in the corridor closer to Beach Street where we need to wait to excavate that until we have a utility moved out of the way. There's a series of telecom fibers that run along the, uh, the alignment that uh, in some cases present a challenge to us. And so we need to move those out of the way. The other thing that's happening here is right underneath the bridge where actually there's an existing retaining wall that needs to be replaced. Uh, so that's gonna be torn down, uh, a new one built in its place. And that sound serves as the foundation for the extension of the multi-use pathway that will eventually go be restored under the 417 bridge there. So a lot of activity still here, um, utility relocations and additional excavation work to finish off in this area. You go to the next slide. Uh, the other thing that big thing that we're doing that's uh, kind of out of sight, out of mind is the Dow's Lake Tunnel. So this is the interior of the tunnel. We've stripped out all of the ballast uh, to check the integrity of the foundation and the integrity of the concrete floors. We've also had the opportunity to get in there and do additional injection grouting to close up the gaps. A few years ago, we used to suffer from icicles in winter uh, due to water dripping in. So that should be rectified 100% as part of this project. And we are adding tunnel ventilation fans, we're adding radiax cable, which will support the emergency radios as well as cellular connections through this tunnel. So we go to the next slide. Carlton station. It's a busy station in the, uh, we're looking north here. So in the foreground, what you see is where the old multi-use pathway went under the alignment. There's a series of 
utilities there. And then once that utility work is done, there'll be a pre-grass structure that's dropped in place. So there's a bit of an upgrade happening to that multi-use pathway. In the middle of the screen, you see the existing head houses for the two fair collection buildings. And then in the far end, you see that was previously, I showed you the, the tunnel connection for the future connection to the Carlton Underground Tunnel Network. So a lot of work uh, going on in this area. Once they get that work in the, uh, the the bottom half of the picture wrapped up, then they'll be able to tidy up the site significantly. Um, further north, uh, there's also some work that if you go by there now, they're, they're actually widening the rock cut because we're extending the double tracking through this area. So you go to the next slide, we show you a photo of Rio River Bridge. And so they've actually wrapped this completely. Um, they're getting in there to sandblast the, the steel members and then rehabilitate them. You know, if there's additional metal pieces that need to be added back in to, to strengthen them, this bridge is getting a, quite a bit of rehabilitation work. The bearings are being replaced. All the, the structure underneath are being repointed and the weeds and everything else will be removed. And then obviously in the right-hand side of this photo, is where they're staging to add a new pedestrian bridge to get across uh, across the river at that location. So that'll be a, a very exciting enhancement to the connectivity in this area. If you go to the next slide, you see a picture of Mooney's Bay. So this is again, so you see the pattern of the, the platform being built up. They'll have to fill this in, uh, add the, the heating to the platform. You see the head house for the fair collection equipment on the right lower right hand side, which we're maintaining. The pathway on the right that you see running into the distance, we're still on track to add lighting to that pathway this year. And then behind us, to the right and behind us is the, the gradient up to the road. And so that's the, the gradient actually needs to be adjusted to meet accessibility standards. And so that work is gonna go, uh, get underway soon. Um, don't know the exact timing on that, but a series of activities happening here. You go to the next slide. We'll slide down to Walkley Station here. Again, you see the platform. Uh, so the, the 80 meter platform, that's gonna support the Stadler vehicle or the double Alston vehicles. And then just behind us is where the elevator, kind of at the bottom of the page is where the elevator bank and the stairs and the access from Walkley Road uh, down to the station is going to be built. And then you see that we had to detour and because of the close proximity of the buildings, we had to close that up temporarily. So it was a bit of a detour through this area. Here are the next slide. Uh, Walkley maintenance facility. So this is coming together nicely. So this is kind of, it looks, looks the same on the exterior pretty much. Uh, but if you go to the interior photo on the next slide, you see there's a lot of activity happening here. Obviously uh, a lot of it fans and exhaust systems that need to be added to the building uh, in order to be able to start up the diesel vehicle indoors, you need to be able to exhaust that to the exterior. And so a lot of work on the interior, but this is a, a really great outcome for the city in terms of uh, in the foreground, there's actually a pit for a wheel lathe. So previously we had to send the wheels off site to get them turned if there was ever wheel flat. So that can be done in-house now. The other thing on the, the right-hand side of the photo, you see an upper upper walkway, which gives us access to the roof, the full length of the vehicle. Previously we were doing, had a bit of a makeshift, but all the permanent and safe a makeshift operation that allowed you to get to part of the roof only at a time. Now we can access the entire roof. Um, so in two, two pits, uh, 80 meters long to allow you to get underneath the vehicle. So a lot of ca capacity inside this building. Uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, you'll see it doesn't look like much, but uh, eventually this will become part of a, a train wash facility. And so previously we were doing manual train washing in an indoor building. So we would literally get out to, uh, you know, scrubbers and sponges to wash the vehicles now where there's going to be an automatic car wash that's included with the system. And then if you go to the next slide, we see the foundation coming together for uh, what is a, a dedicated inspection building. So we'll be able to, in addition to the two, two bays for actual maintenance activity and inspections that can occur uh, in the, the primary maintenance facility, we have a second maintenance building that's being put together that will allow us to do inspections on the overnight period. So a lot of additional capacity coming at Walkley Yard. If you go to the next slide, we'll take a look at Greenboro Station. Uh, where you see the existing platform was a structural steel platform. They're extending that. Um, you see kind of where the, that track at the bottom of the page veers off to walk the yard and then the straight north-south track there as well. So um, we're, we're going to maintain this access for freight movements eventually to take freight down to the NRC. Otherwise, this will be the main north-south movements down to South Keys. And you see the crane tower in the distance for South Keys uh, and, and the progress we'll, we're making there is shown on the next slide. So this is really, if you go by uh, South Key Station, this is really only building up to track level. So there's a lot of uh, essentially rooms underneath the building. And then there's the walkway that gets you through 
um, from the transitway building through to the LRT station. So the fair gate uh, struck elements will be underneath uh, that building. They're going to build up this entire area. So what you see now is actually track level, and then there'll be an additional structure that comes above that with the platform and with the, all the structural steel and the, the coverage elements for that particular station. If you go to the next uh, slide, so Hunt Club Road. So we continue to work in Hunt Club Road. The columns are starting to come out of the ground now. We should be able to uh, start seeing the piers and the pier caps, and then hopefully girders will come along shortly after that. But this is this is kind of a crux point for us, this double track that we need to get across to get the train south of Hunt Club Road. It's double track from here, and then it wise uh, at the connection to the airport, which I'll show you in a second. So a lot of work still happening in this area. There's a couple, there's a creek just north of here that uh, needs some special attention. So it's all very sensitive. And, and then obviously the pedestrian bridge, which is going in at this location, which is gonna connect across the road, which will be very good for uh, people in the area. Go to the next slide. So further south, uh, we, we see Leitrim Station. So you actually see that in the distance, you see the, the bridge over uh, Leitrim Road there. So double tracking through this area and the, the trains, the, the double track to single track occurs just north of here, but the trains come uh, south to Leitrim platform. Uh, what you see there is the footings for the uh, the elevator banks, as well as the buildup of the stairs that are going to take you to the platform. So the platform is not, not a full story up, but it's probably a half story up anyway. If you go to the next slide, a little bit further down, Bozal Station. And so a lot of the stations, we actually, uh, you see you see the platforms coming together first. Uh, Bozal, it's the opposite. We actually have to uh, build a foundation just for the track work because the ground conditions in this area are so poor. Uh, a lot of that time and effort has been spent improving the soil conditions. And then what you see uh, in the kind of the center of the screen there is actually the, the foundation for, uh, for the track, which is required to, for the train stopping locations. And so we'll build up the platform on either side of that, uh, that station. Um, and then the obviously the, the elevator banks and the stairs up to the top of the station are all right, you kind of see them coming out of the ground a little bit now. <clears throat> if you go to the next station, uh, so line bank, so just a shot of the stairs, and obviously the double elevator banks on both sides. <clears throat> and then the next slide actually shows you a much better uh, kind of stand back some distance and you see the overall, <clears throat> the overall structure. Uh, so there's a couple things here. There's the, on the left-hand side is the guideway that's gonna hold the track. And then on the right-hand side, you actually see the additional girders which hold the station platform. Uh, so a lot of work at this location. There's even some structural steel underneath uh, for the entrance that's being built. So it's really coming together and starting to look like a, you can start to see the skeleton of what is a future station at this location. Go to the next slide. <clears throat> so Upland Station. So you see Ernst & Young Conference Center there peeking out on the left. Uh, you see the NRC facility in the distance and then very far in the distance, you actually see the airport. So the trains will come down off of Airport Parkway through the through the guideway, and they'll come up a little bit. Uh, this is essentially, again, we're building up to the track level here. So you'll have to go up the stairs or elevators to get uh, to the top of the platform. Uh, and then the trains will be a, a two-sided platform uh, for the trains to stop here. And then you see uh, the guideway in the distance that's being built up. We have some good photos of that on the next slide. So this, after you, you leave Uplands, uh, you're still, you know, at grade generally, um, but then you start to come up to grade, come up to elevation, and then there's a bit of an elevated guideway to make the last little stretch uh, over one of the airport access roads and a variety of parking, different things happening at the airport to get to airport station. If you go to the next slide, you can actually see, um, so the, on the right-hand side is actually the steel framework for the LRT part of the station, and then you see the LRT platform is where the, the uh, I would say that the lumber is built up a bit of a handrail there. So that's the LRT platform. And then essentially the middle, the section in the middle of this picture is where uh, there's a contractor in there now building up uh, the essentially what is gonna be a concourse and waiting area between the airport and the structure. So that area has been handed over um, to, uh, to the back to the airport. It was previously in possession by our contractor. This is one of the critical, I would call intermediate milestones on the project. And so getting that handover done is a, a very positive sign. If you go to the next slide, we see a bit of the, uh, you know, this is, this, so this is where the track foundation is between uh, our previous images and the airport guideway. So you see it's in a very advanced state. The fencing is up, 
Uh, there's a duct bank there, the, the foundation is there, they've been using it as a bit of an access road. But really from this point, if you go to the next slide, the next step is to, to put the rail down. So they have brought rail over to this area um, to start placing it, and then they'll, they'll come back with the, the ties and the ballast, and they'll be able to start setting track um, on the guideway section to the airport as well. I mean, they're doing rail in a couple of spots, one on the section to the airport, and then the other section uh, south of Hunt Club Road. So we go to the next slide. Uh, so this is actually at the, the Y intersection between, uh, between the main track and the airport link. So this is actually where it's going to turn off, a bit of a signal hut there. Um, so this is supporting this is supporting the hardware for the Siemens train control system. Uh, and you see on the right-hand side a bit of it's buried under ballast, but uh, there's a bit of rail there that goes further south from there. So we are starting to see some of the hardware for the signal system show up and get installed on site, which is a good sign of progress. And we'll monitor that uh, over the coming coming months. If you go to the next uh, the next uh, slide, so we spoke about the guideway construction, showed you pictures of the the station construction, and it's you know critically we also need the vehicles. Uh, you know that's been one of the key milestones that I've identified as part of this project is to make sure that those vehicles arrive. Uh, the first shipment is still on plan to arrive in the fall. Um, so we're, we're very excited about that. I know the training group and the operations group is very excited about that. Uh, one vehicle starting production, and then there's kind of some, a few immediate steps, and then two vehicles are actually going undergoing serial, serial testing. So that's testing of all the cabling and wiring. Um, if you go to the next slide, I can show you some photos of that activity. Uh, <clears throat> so top left, you see the starting to do the fit out. Top right, you start to see some of the electronics, uh, all the control systems for the train being installed. Uh, bottom left, uh, you see some uh, insulation being installed. And then bottom right, you see the, you know, the vehicle actually coming together as they're uh, applying the, the nose to one of the vehicles that's being built. So the next slide, you see a little bit more progress. So this is, you know, various elements in their factory. So just moving different pieces around so you can get a good shot of the underside of that vehicle. So this vehicle is in a pretty good state. You know, the couplers installed, uh, really it's the, the bogies and trucks underneath the vehicle that aren't, aren't included. If you go to the next slide, uh, from the inspection, or the I would say the preliminary manufacturing facility, it actually gets uh, pushed on rail over to this uh, the testing facility. At the testing facility is where they put the bogies on, which you'll see in the next uh, slide. Uh, so there's just a photo of them <clears throat> taking that car shell um, with all its you know it's the, everything's installed at this point. Uh, the windows, the the doors, the the onboard electronics. You see the coupler there. Uh, and they're putting it down onto the bogies uh, to set it in place to, to start the testing. They can do a little uh, a little test amount. I mean, they can do a lot of serial testing, verification of wiring, cabling, that type of thing at the facility. They can only do a limited amount of dynamic testing. And so the majority of that will happen on site in Ottawa when the vehicles arrive. So that's the uh, that's the update on the Trillium line. Go to the next slide. I'll, I'll give you a quick update on the, the mobility. So the pathway we spoke about, the MUPS at Gladstone, uh, so it's, uh, it's been under detour for a, a long time. The MUP along Rita River near Vincent Massey Park, we were looking at doing some a detour through this area, uh, but now we've had to adjust and uh, we are, we've worked with the local councillors to, to accommodate flagging through this area. So it will get busy. And so we do need to be cognizant that it is a construction site. There will be safety flagmen and flag people through that area to, to make it safe, but um, but we'll we'll do our best to, to keep access along that that multi-use pathway. If you go to the next slide, and then the various other MOPs. I think they've they've been under a detour for a while. I think there's been a few the odd issue here and there with those. Um, we do get some feedback occasionally from the public, and so that is helpful. We can make adjustments as necessary to make sure it's uh, safer and clearer, and happy to update things and share more information on when this changes. Go to the next slide. Okay, so we'll go go into the east now. So I think a lot of a lot of people have seen these photos, uh, the next uh, series of photos, and there we get some good shots in the, the drone flyover that we did through this area, setting the girders to uh, essentially make the elevated structure that goes from the center of the highway to the one side of the highway. So go to the next slide, you can kind of see a bit of an overview. Um, <clears throat> how the trains are, you know, it's basically gonna be built up to be have the full guideway here with ballast to track, uh, maybe some direct fixation as well, to take the trains from Blair uh, into the center of the highway. And from there, they'll travel along the center of the highway. You go to the next slide. 
Uh, just another shot uh, from down below, just to kind of give you a sense of the height in, in, in relation to vehicles through this area. Go to the next slide. Uh, so Montreal Road. So this is the uh, end of last year. We had the, the big activity, the big cutovers to get uh, those new road bridges in place. The, the bridges are, are going to be widened a little bit. And uh, you see kind of a series of columns. The next slide, I think, shows a bit of a better view of some of the columns that are coming out of the ground. But essentially, we need they're, they're putting in 27 caissons and 27 columns uh, to be able to support additional roadway and the, and the station. So a lot of activity happening in this area. They've been making great progress. Those uh, columns are coming up quite quickly. And so from there, we'll go into uh, we see the pier cats and the gurs later this year, and that then you'll start to really get a sense of the station and the station structure, its, it's size. It's going to be uh, an impressive structure in the middle of the road here. Go to the next slide. Uh, one of the other things that uh, in the middle of the road, there's been a lot of activity right at Green Street, uh, where we have to essentially future proof uh, for, a, for a future upgrade to the culvert system in this area. So you see a lot of activity right at Green Street in the middle of the road. So we're doing essentially upgrades to be able to support the LRT over this culvert system. But we are actually adding a uh, pedestrian bridge on the one side. So if you go to the next slide, you can see uh, where the pedestrian bridge is going to come. So this is the, the multi-use pathway that, that's running essentially parallel from Blair all the way through to Montreal Road and beyond. There'll be a pedestrian bridge to get over, over Greens Creek, and then you'll connect to the Sir George Chan Carte uh, multi-use pathway and pathway network. So that'll be a very nice feature uh, in addition to the project. And then in the center of the page, you see where they essentially they're building up a bit of a structure that's the foundation for the LRT over those culverts. And so in the future, long-term plans would be to do an open or open bottom uh, culvert to allow to be more friendly for fish and, and wildlife and things to get through this location. If you go to the next slide, uh, Jean Dark. So a few weeks ago, we had a couple of really big weekends where we had to move the uh, essentially widen the highway, move the ramps, do a bunch of work at night. Uh, you know, it was high impact work, but that, that work essentially enabled us to open up and get into the center of the highway here to start building John Dark Station. So you see there start, started the excavation to, to create the foundation. Uh, and then I'll take you through some of the recent renderings of, uh, of John Dark Station and, and some changes that we've made at this location. So if you go to the next slide, uh, so just some updated renderings. So we do get these on a regular basis as part of the design development to really understand uh, you know, what the system is going to look like, what the station is going to look like. And so this is, you know, should be very familiar, has the same look and feel as the other stations. Uh, same type of fare gates, shite block and fare gates are going to be installed. The same, same with the, the ticket vending machine. If you go to the next slide, uh, just a view of the platform. Uh, you know, so this is, you know, you're at, uh, you're essentially at highway level here. Um, so just on the other side of that, that wall on the left is the highway. Um, and so you see the stairs going up to the, the road up top, and then there's a set of elevator banks on either side to get you uh, to the road as well. If you go to the next slide, you actually see, so at street level, um, so this is what the station is going to look like roughly, um, you know, a bit of a plaza to allow future widening of the bridge if required. Um, and then on the next slide, we talk a little bit about just how we've reimagined the roadway. So there is a median um, in this roadway, and so we've tried to tighten up that roadway uh, reduce the lane width a little bit by sacrificing uh, the median, add, giving that, that width back to the sidewalks uh, to create kind of a pathway on one side and a, a fuller width sidewalk on the other side. So that's a lot of, so this is one of kind of the critical changes we've made as part of the connectivity studies to, to make this station uh, as friendly as possible, uh, because obviously we want people to arrive at it using all modes. If you go to the next slide. Uh, so further down, Place d'Orléans, so we just had a big weekend here, so this is prior to the cut over the weekend, so we, there was a lot of rock excavation in this area, and then they had to put in the drainage behind, behind the wall and then get on with the, uh, the widening of the highway. So again, this is another location where we've done the widening at this location, we can now get into the center uh, of the road to start building the station. So the next one that we have in this configuration is Orleans. So we need our Conway Glen. Um, that, that will be one of the next ones that we need to get to, to be able to open up the station construction. Go to the next slide. Um, so that's overview of the east. Some of the impacts, uh, Montreal Road, I think those have been pretty seamless. We've been doing various road closures. We haven't had any negative feedback about that. So that's, that's worked well and that's been very helpful in terms of advancing the work. 
Um, the one that we have had more feedback on, so if you go to the next slide, the contractors had to do a series of these super weekends to widen the ramps out, uh, to move the ramps, widen the highway and make space in the middle of the road. So this is a challenging work because, because there's so many ramps involved. And so we've done a series of super weekends Four of the 12 super weekends have been completed. Um, they are, you know, they do have high impacts. We haven't had that many traffic, uh, you know, complaints or comments on, on the work. So it's gone pretty, pretty well. This last weekend, the weather was perfect for paving. So they made good progress and were able to wrap up things in a timely fashion. Some of them, uh, because we're working continuously, there is, we have received a lot of feedback about the tonal backup uh, enunciators. So we're working with a contractor to eliminate those from the project. Um, we've had some success with that. The occasional unit does get through, and so we do chase that down right away. Uh, so a series of closures still remaining to, to get the, the highway widened uh, through the east. Uh, the big thing, the big challenge for us is, is at all of the intersections of the roadways where they meet the, the highway. Um, in, in sections like the Greenbelt, we've had, you know, that, that work's been done uh, for a long time now, so we've been able to get in there and start the, the guideway construction, at least the, the foundation work anyway. Let's go to the next slide. Um, so I won't go through all of these now, but there's this is kind of an overview of the eight remaining big weekends that we have, super weekends. Um, that's not to say there's not work on the other weekends, just to say that there's still a lot of activity ongoing. So you go to the next slide, uh, some additional weekends there. And then uh, very next slide, uh, I think it's, yeah, so through September. So that's, that's what's happening in the east. It's still all about widening the highway, especially at those interchanges and getting started with station construction. So we've got at least two locations, or three locations to include Montreal Road where we've been able to start on the foundation work, which is very good. So we'll go into the west now to give you an overview. Uh, so we start, uh, so I'll take you through the alignment the same way I did last time. So we start at uh, Tunney's Pasture. So looking off the end of Tunney's Pasture, you see Goldenrod Bridge. So this is a new bridge so we, that we're building up. Once we uh, open this up to traffic, then we're going to be able to remove the berm that exists now that's holding up the existing roadway. So this is a, a key piece to open up the, uh, the rock cut for more work. We go to the next slide. Uh, so the slurry wall construction uh, is progressing uh, through the SJAM. So this is the unique technique where they're actually excavating the material, backfilling with a mud slurry, and then they're coming back after the fact and pumping in concrete that pushes out the, uh, the concrete slurry or sorry, the mud slurry replaces it with concrete to build up the wall, and then we can excavate between the two walls. And so you kind of you can kind of make out the two channels of the, the wall that are being built up on either side of that truck. Uh, the one is tight to the tent, the other is a little bit farther away from the clamshell. The next slide, we have a better, better picture of that clamshell unit. So this is, you see, so that unit is actually kind of dropping down vertically, vertically to excavate the material. It gets backfilled with this mud slurry, and then the mud slurry is uh, pumped out. Uh, when concrete is pumped in. So pretty uh, pretty unique process to, to build the wall to this area. To go to the next uh, next slide. Um, so this is the Byron Linear Park. And so good progress here, um, getting through uh, getting through the rock. Uh, they've been, you know, made excellent progress in part because the water levels haven't caused them any problems. So they do have some dewatering facilities along the alignment. That's the, they were the tented structures that you would have seen in the winter, uh, but they've had good success getting through this work. Go to the next slide. Uh, just a kind of a shot at the, uh, the, the station site where there is a lot of activity, a, a lot of noise um, being generated through this area to get this excavated. Um, you know, the thought is to get as much of it or all of it done this year so that they can start tunnel construction uh, shortly thereafter. Go to the next slide. So we're down now to Lincoln Field Station. So you can see, you can really start to see the layout of the, the system come together here. On the right hand side, you see. Uh, the temporary bus loop that was put into service back in December to make space for the, the new future station. You see kind of the contours there, the rectangle uh, running north-south uh, with the crane in the middle of it. So this is going to be Lincoln uh, Field Station and it's going to cut under a new bridge under Carling Avenue and go off into the distance. And then there'll be a, a new bus loop on the upper left-hand side of the photo where you see kind of there's a bit of an elevation change there. Um, that's where people will come in. So we have some updated renderings of this station as well, just to give you kind of an idea of a look and feel. On the next slide. So just the kind of the approach from the street. So um, you see it, it is, you get a sense that the train is down below, you know, it's lower down. So there's a bit of an elevation change at, at this location. If you go to the next slide. 
uh, just the you know standard fare gate array uh, that you're going to see at the station, standard ticket vending machine. So again, a common look and feel that you see at all the stations. We go to the next slide. And then just down at the platform level. I would say the unique thing about this station is that it is a three track platform. And so that's going to, uh, you know, have a pretty direct impact on the signage that's required and people navigating the station. This will be kind of the crux of the, the wayfinding challenge on, on stage two. We go to the next slide. We're going to continue further uh, south, uh, Lincoln Fields flyover. So good, uh, good progress here. Um, so that went in last year. So they're going to continue to build that up, work on it over the over the summer. If you go to the next slide, Iris Station. So again, you know, re relocating Pinecrest Creek, having to work around the transit way, having to work around the utilities in this area. So there'll be a series of relocations that are to come uh, as they as they relocate the creek and then build the uh, the guideway and the bridge structure that will hold hold the road and go over over the new LRT tracks. In the distance there, you see Queensview Station uh, on the transitway, so that will be decommissioned. There's plans as part of the highway widening to eventually use up those additional lanes, um, but that, that station will be decommissioned. There'll only be an emergency access point for, uh, for the train system at that location once we're completed. To go to the next slide, I will show you a shot of Algonquin Station. So fully opened up into the underground cavern that was pre-existing. Um, so a lot of work there due to the ground conditions to, to essentially create additional foundations to go down deep. And then in the middle of the screen, if you go by the station now, there's actually a second, there's a primary head house and a pedestrian bridge going from the Algonquin building to the head house that's kind of in, in this major hole that you see in the center of the screen. And then in the middle of the page, you'll see now that it's actually been opened up. There's an additional access point at that location. Um, so there's additional uh, building and structure that's going to go there as well. So a lot of work at all the conference. So we go back uh, to the next slide over to Queensview Station. Uh, so tucked in, you see the bus facility on the right-hand side, and then just kind of you see where the uh, you, that curve that comes around is where the track is going to curve in and come to Queensview Station, pedestrian bridge going to the other side of the road at this location. Um, so good progress there. The next, uh, the next big location is Pinecrest where there's a lot of activity happening here. So I'm just, to, just to kind of explain what's going on the bottom, the bottom of the page is actually they're excavating for a, for a new, uh, for a tunnel, LRT, say cut and cover tunnel that's gonna go under a uh, realigned ramp. Um, in the middle of the screen, you actually see that's the Pinegrass Road Bridge. Um, so they're building up the bridge that's gonna carry the road. The LRT traffic is gonna run under it. There's gonna be a super week uh, later this summer where they actually, once that structure is finished, they're going to close Pinegrass Road, they're going to ex excavate for the space of that bridge, and then they're going to push the bridge into place. And then the backfill, and then uh, obviously build the road back over it. So that's going to be a big weekend, but opens up the connection um, through for the train to get under, uh, under Pinegrass Road and through this area. Then there's also a new ramp that's going to be built uh, a westbound ramp. Uh, you can see it now if you drive by, the structure's in place. Um, but it's essentially to, again, make space for the LRT guideway as well as Pinecrest Station. So go to the next slide. Uh, so this is just a bit of a close-up look of that bridge that are, they're building. So they're going to have to actually excavate out Pinecrest Road, put in a foundation, and then push the structure in place, uh, backfill it, and then pave it all um, in one supercharged week. So go to the next slide. Further down at Holly Acres. So bit of a reconfiguration to traffic is going to have to take place here, but to see the bridge uh, that's holding the LRT traffic is coming along nicely. Go to the next slide. Moody intersection interchange is another one where there's a lot of activity, a lot of ramps that need to be dealt with. And so we're essentially, you see in the middle of the screen there, uh, they've created a new structure that's going to hold Moody Road. To allow They're going to build one half and then come back and build the other half. And obviously they also need to build the structure that hold the ramps over the LRT as well. So a lot of activity to kind of get the trains through these uh, through these interchanges. And then on the other side, uh, which is shown on the next slide, you see uh, the LMSF building coming together. So a lot of activity uh, along linear uh, maintenance bu building that's going to hold um, the additional vehicles that are required for stage two, obviously prevents them having to dead head back to Belfast. So they'll be able to kind of terminate at the end of the line here. You'll be able to do all the light maintenance here. There'll also be a driver's facility and a few other things going on on the site to, to maintain the fleet. Uh, you see on the bottom left that they've actually realigned one of the ramps to make space to allow them to build a ramp structure. So a lot of activity throughout the alignment. Go to the next slide. 
Um, so just in terms of mobility impacts, so this is information that we share with the councillors on a regular basis. Uh, Richmond Road, so there's been a series of kind of on and off closures that we had to do. Carling Avenue, a lot of work to move utilities in that uh, in the area of Lincoln Field Station. There's also going to be the construction of a bridge at that location. Iyer Street, uh, changing all the time. Uh, and so there's a lot, lot of activity there. And then Richmond Road at Woodruff, you know, we are planning this 13 day closure to end at the end of the month, to start at the end of the month, um, really to as a means to expedite the construction through that area, to do it more safely, uh, to, to reduce our overall impact on the project and get some float back from the project. And so that's coming up shortly, um, but that will be a, a great benefit to the project in terms of assuring that we can get through that intersection safely. Go to the next slide. Uh, and then all of those, uh, I mean, the, the three interchanges, Pinecrest, Moody, Holly Acres to a lesser extent, but the Pinecrest and Moody have a series of ramp closures that are required to enable us to build those structures to get the LRT underneath. Um, and then a couple of different things uh, that we're looking ahead to Richmond Road, potential detour in Scott Street uh, next year, uh, for sure, uh, or later this year. Some work is going to start, but we need to get a temporary bridge installed to, to allow traffic to get over the transitway. So a lot of activity coming, um, some stuff that's still in the works there. Um, so we're still, still tracking that. Go to the next slide. Uh, we just talked about the Alston vehicles briefly. So as, as you know, they're being manufactured out of Brampton, uh, of Brent, Alston's Brampton facility, then they're shipped to, this, to the site in the city. Um, then they undergo, they have to go train control testing here. There's a burn-in period um, for them. Um, there's been a bit of a slowdown on this activity, but still the, the schedule for these vehicles, they're, uh, the order of 38 vehicles, we already have four of them. The remaining 34 are scheduled to be uh, commissioned and with the city um, by 2023, which is obviously a good time in terms of our 2024 uh, timing for the East and 2025 timing for the West. Go to the next slide. Uh, just a couple of shots of the Alston production facility and the work that's going on there. So we have added a, have added an on-site inspector at that location. Obviously, it's uh, challenging to go back and forth. And so we're, we've taken up with a local uh, firm who can provide support for us in, in Brampton just to, to monitor the progress and to mo monitor for quality issues and other things that arise. Go to the next slide. Uh, just a, just a brief check in about the comms and stakeholder team. They've been doing a great job with all of the you know community sessions and updates and trying to keep up to date with uh, with feedback from the community on different things. And so we're always looking for different uh, forums and opportunities to present on the progress or answer questions. Um, so you know we have transitioned to a virtual format, which uh, allows a, a great deal of participation. Those have been going well. So thank you to the councillors for helping to host those. Um, and uh, we look forward to doing more of those as, as we progress. The next slide is the end. Great, thank you very much, uh, Michael. Uh, Councillor Dudas. Yes, I, I have a motion uh, to resolve in camera. Be it further resolved that in accordance with the procedure bylaw, Finance and Economic Development Committee resolve in camera pursuant to subsection 13.1e, litigation or potential litigation effect in the city, and 13.1f, the receiving of advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose to receive and consider the LRT legal updates, stages one and two in camera reporting out date, not to be reported out. Okay, on the motion, carried. So we'll take five minutes, uh, five minute recess to allow members to leave the Zoom meeting and join the MS Teams meeting, as well as to allow clerk staff to stop the Zoom meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm.